This video is going to be how to play festival gigs. These are great gigs that are usually in front of a big audience or potentially in front of a big audience. A lot of times they're on a big stage with a big PA and sometimes even big you know, light show if it, if it goes into the nighttime. Uh, when I say festivals, I'm not talking about the huge national festivals uh, that have all the big, big time headline acts in there. Uh, in every city, in every part of the country, there are smaller local or regional festivals that happen. These could be anything from like, you know, down here in the south, we have things like the, a shrimp festival or a kingfish tournament um, or uh, a you know, blues festival or things like that. There's all kinds of sort of themed festivals that happen. A lot of times they have live music there. Uh, another one that we have around here is called Dancing in the Streets. I think there's several festivals called Dancing in the Streets around different parts of the country. And it's just, uh, it usually happens in the springtime and when the weather's nice and it's an outdoor festival and they'll have all kinds of booths and concessions and vendors out there. And that's how the festival organizes. That's, that's how they make money from the thing. And then they can use that money to hire bands um, and pay for all of their expenses. Usually those kind of gigs they don't pay really well unless you happen to be the headliner and you've negotiated a good rate with them. But a lot, of, but they have bands all day long for those kind of events. So if it's a Saturday or sometimes it's over a whole weekend, but they might have 30 bands playing uh, uh, throughout the day, depending on what their schedule is. So there's lots of uh, opportunities to play those kind of gigs. And, you know, people go out there and they'll hang out there all day long and there could be thousands of people uh, watching your band play. It could, it could be a lot of fun to do a gig like that, even if it's not a lot of pay. Um, one of the things you can think about for, gig, for taking advantage of a gig like that is it's a great, it makes you look good. You get on that stage and it makes you look good as a band. And if you want, you can make sure that there's cameras there capturing your live performance. Um, imagine if you had some original music that you were playing at something like that. You could hire a camera crew, a professional camera crew, to shoot video of you playing your, your song, playing your set. And then you could go through and edit out all of your original songs and you could make a music video out of that and put it on YouTube. Uh, that's an idea. And that way you're on a big stage that makes you look good instead of a small little bar or something like that. Have a, have a good setting for yourself. So that's one idea of a way to take advantage of that. But even without that, it's just a lot of fun being on a big stage in front of a big crowd, playing through a big, powerful PA system. Because a lot of times at these events, they hire a professional sound company that has a PA system that's bigger than most bands are gonna have. It's probably bigger than the PA system that your local you know, bar band is gonna have. And it's a lot of fun to, to play through a system like that. And then you got all their sound techs and crew members, they take care of everything for you. Uh, and it usually, you know, if they're professionals, they know what they're doing, they do a good job. And, and I always enjoy playing those kind of gigs. Now, there are different types of festivals and they have different requirements about what kind of music you should be playing. Most festivals are, they're just family friendly, fun kind of gatherings, the kind of, that I talk about where it's a shrimp festival or uh, some other seasonal festival like that. Those kind of gigs, you probably want to do mostly cover songs. You can do some of your originals too, if they sort of fit in with the, with the feel uh, of your other stuff. Other types of festivals are original music festivals. And that's where, you know, they have all kinds of indie bands or, or any kind of local bands to, to just play their music and no cover songs. And there's reasons why they do that. Um, first of all, that could be the theme of the festival. Second of all, uh, then they don't have to pay any licensing fees to the, you know, to the collection uh, companies like the ASCAP and BMI. Because if you're doing cover songs, they have to pay fees to those kind of organizations. Now, how many songs do you need for something like this? Well, usually you're just playing one set and usually that one set is less than an hour long. It's probably more like 45 or 50 minutes long. So that's what, 10, 11, maybe 12 songs. It's not a very long set. Um, so you're just going to obviously just do all your very best stuff in that set. That's all you need to be prepared for. And there's, there's some bands, that's all they do. They don't even bother playing bar gigs or any other kind of gigs where they have to know 40 or 50 songs. They just want to do those few festivals that they get booked at throughout the year. And they just have their one set of good stuff that they do. And that's all they do. And that's a, that's, that's a pretty good, uh, schedule for a, for a band to have a good time doing it. If that's all you want to do is just have fun in your band. Like I said, you're probably not going to make a lot of money playing these festivals, but it is a pretty fun type of gig to do. So how do you find these festivals? How do you get booked? Well, obviously in your own hometown, you probably are aware of, of a few festivals that happen on an annual basis. And obviously you could start there. Uh, they usually have a website, a web page, which will give you some way that you can get, get in touch with those people. A lot of times there's even a special email address or a special link for bands who want to 
apply to play at the festival. So follow their channels and go through it that way. In addition to the local ones that you may already be aware of, um, you can look in your other local publications, maybe your local city has a website and it may have like an events page of some kind. Uh, and that's a good idea to get an, uh, you know, get an idea of, you know, events that you may not have thought of that are in your area that may be happening. And then you can decide whether or not that's something that you might want to play at, or at least try to get into. Uh, now to find them in other cities, uh, just Google it. There's, there are actually websites that are get dedicated to just lists of various festivals throughout the country. And you're just going to have to spend some time going to all their websites and looking at them to try to figure out which ones are going to be appropriate for you because there's so many different types of festivals, everything from bluegrass to just arts festivals. And like I said, the, you know, blues festivals and, uh, original music festivals, and there's some rock festivals as well, uh, even local small rock festivals, there's that kind of stuff. And there's country music, there's everything under the sun. So you really just need to, you're gonna to have to spend some time looking through it and sorting through it, and you can, uh, a lot of their websites might have, you know, video clips of bands playing, then you get an idea of what kind of, uh, what to expect at, at a gig, at, at their particular type of gig, what, you know, what kind of bands do they have, what kind of PA do they typically set up, and then you can kind of weed through it and figure out which ones you think might be appropriate for you. And of course, the geography is gonna to matter too. You don't necessarily need to be playing something on the other side of the country, but if you can find some that are in your region that are the kind of thing that you wanna do and that you think that your band would do well there, then uh, by all means, get in touch with them and then get your band ready to go do those kind of gigs. Let's talk about equipment. Well, one of the great things about playing a gig like that is you don't need to bring a lot of equipment. You certainly don't need your own PA system. They're almost always gonna provide a, a, a big PA system that they've rented from some local sound company to take care of all that. So all you need to worry about is your stage gear. And really, there's, there's, you only need a little bit of that. Uh, the drummer, a lot of times, doesn't need to bring his own drum kit. In fact, a lot of these festivals won't even allow it. They're gonna have a drum set there. They don't wanna have to take the time in between bands to set up and tear down. You only have a short amount of time in between bands. They, they usually, it's usually like 15 minutes. So you've got 15 minutes for that band to get off the stage while you're loading on at the same time. Uh, and you know, you wanna be nice and not, not be rude to each other. Don't trip over each other. Uh, let the other guys get out of the way as much as possible first and then, but you've got to be able to get set up really fast. So you definitely wanna have a very compact rig, all of your stage gear should be ready to go, should be easy to set up. You know, if you've got a very elaborate setup, maybe you wanna trim it down for this kind of gig. Uh, and like I said, the drummer is probably, you're probably not gonna be able to use your own drums anyway. Maybe if you've got a couple of special cymbals or something like that, you could very quickly swap it all out. Uh, but for the most part, you're gonna be playing on whatever drum set is already there. That also goes for the bass, uh, the bass line. They, they call it a back line, the back line, the back of the stage where they've got amps and drum set already set up. Uh, the bass rig is probably a lot of these, I've, I've done festivals before where they say you cannot bring your own bass rig, you have to use the one that's already there. Well, the thing about bass guitar rigs is they all kind of, they're very similar anyway. It's really just an amplified speaker. There's nothing special about them anyway. And they usually are, they usually have pretty good stuff there for the bass player. So uh, bring your own guitar, obviously your own bass guitar and plug in to their bass rig. If you've got any other processors, any effects, if you've got one of those SANS amp overdrive units or something like that, that's fine. Uh, but plug into their bass rig. Uh, keyboard players are the same way. Um, of course, uh, keyboards are just gonna be coming through the monitors and they usually have pretty robust monitor setups. Um, but, uh, you know, keep your keyboard rig as to, to a minimum. You know, some people, some keyboard players have these massive, they'll have three keyboards and they'll have a whole rack of stuff. Well, maybe you figure out a way to trim that down to, you know, the, just, the, just what you really need to play that one set of songs. You know, a festival gig is kind of its own thing and maybe you need to just have your setup, you know, streamlined for that type of gig. Now, guitar players are a little different. You can get away with bringing your own guitar amp. And the reason is because the guitar amp rig, there's a lot of variation between rigs and uh, I have always brought my own guitar rig. So, but keep it small and compact and make sure that you can set it up very quickly. Usually what I do is before we're going on the stage, off stage, get it out, get it unpacked, get it all put together and ready to go so that you can just, you know, you and a buddy or whoever could just pick the whole thing up and put it on the stage already, already put together. Because really all they're gonna do is they're gonna just take the microphone off of their amp and they're just gonna stick it in front of your amp. So that's not really, it's not really complicated for the sound man or anything, but you've got to be able to 
set up your guitar rig pretty quickly and you're probably going to have effects pedals and you got to run that out to the front of the stage as well. That's another thing to keep in mind for your effects pedals. A lot of these festival stages are pretty big. They're bigger than what you would normally do you know, in a bar gig where your pedal board is like right here and like maybe one or two feet behind you is your amp rig. And so you can easily have 10 or 15 foot cables, maybe even 20 going to your foot pedals out front. But some of these festival stages are like 30 feet out. They're, they're big stages. So if you've got your amp way in the back, your pedal board, your cables may not reach all the way out to the front of the stage. So I, I, I ran into that problem uh, a few times and I ended up having to scoop my amp way forward with me, which is kind of awkward. So keep that in mind. You might want to plan out in advance to have long enough cables where your pedal board can, can reach all the way back to your amp, depending on how you're going to set it up. So keep your equipment to a minimum. Keep your, uh, keep your guitar rig compact. You can use your own guitar rig, but keep it compact and easily and easy to set up. The drummer is going to probably use a drum set that's already there and the bass player is probably going to use the bass rig that's already there. Lead singers, if you've got your own microphone, yeah, maybe, you know, you don't want to slobber all over somebody else's microphone. So you can bring your own mic. If you have your own wireless unit, make that very clear to the stage tech who's there, the people that are, uh, you know, right there at the stage helping you get set up that you've got your own wireless unit so that you can set up your receiver somewhere where they can plug it in and then you can run around with it. But that, that's something, you know, you want to make sure you communicate to the technicians that are there so you can get set up as, as quickly as possible. Otherwise, you can use their microphones. I don't like using their microphone because, you know, you've had 30 people slobbering all, all, over, all day long. At the very least, take an alcohol wipe and <laughs> wipe off that microphone. <laughs> so your setup has to be fast. You've got to be able to set up really quickly, five, 10 minutes at the max, and then you're ready to go. So those are my tips on how to get booked at festival gigs. Do some research online to find those gigs, but uh, it's worth it because gig those gigs are a lot of fun. Even if they don't pay a lot, there's just a lot of fun. And it can be the highlight of your gigging uh, year, you know, because it, it's like playing a concert. It's like it's it's a big show and you can potentially be playing in front of thousands of people at gigs like that, which is a lot of fun. It's a real blast. So comment below. Let me know what you think. If you have any other ideas or suggestions, drop it in there and uh, of course, hit the like button and the subscribe and the little bell and all the things you usually do on YouTube videos, and we'll see you next time.